I want to know, do you feel that your life can and should be so much more than it is? Have you recently had any of these negative thoughts? My life, job, health sucks. It's easy for you to say, nothing ever works out for me. When is it gonna be my turn for love? Then you need to change your mindset today. If you want to know what that abundance thing is that hippie people seem to go on about, now is your chance. I'm going to ask ex-NRL player Tony Priddle from My Mechanics, who combines science, yes, science with spirituality, about how we can change our mindsets really easily. To help you think positively again, to attract what you truly deserve in your life. So Tony, you say it's easy to change your mindset. How can that be so easy? So the first thing we need to understand, Mel, is we actually need to understand our mind. Most people out there will be walking around think they're really conscious beings. But the science behind this is we are conscious 5% of the day, and that's, that's going to the top end. It's 1% to 5% of the day. The other 99 to 95% of the time, we are subconscious. So we are running on programming and basically we live the same day over and over again with the same thoughts over and over again. All right, so if we're running our mindset from subconscious, 95% of the time, you're talking about behaviors and attributes that we naturally just play out every day. Is that what you're talking about? So most people would get the concept of um, subconscious as in did you forget how to walk here today. Mm -hmm. That's actually a program running in. And right. so everyone would have had the experience about driving their car and getting to a destination and going, how did I get here? Yeah. How did they do it? You they didn't, tell me. <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't forget how to drive the car, did they? Mm. It's already in their mind. What they don't realize is their emotions are actually set up the same way. And the easiest way to explain that is husband's had a really hard day at work. Mm -hmm. He comes home, he's thinking about paying the bills and he's had you know, a few problems with his employees and the, wife, and the wife just says, have you taken the bin out yet? A little flip switches in his head and he, <laughs> and he goes off his nana and completely out of context with the situation or the question was asked because his conscious mind, 1% to 5%, was distracted. And he went into an old behaviour, probably learnt by his father. So All right, so how can you identify some of those behaviours uh, that are going on subconsciously that we're not aware of? How can you become aware of them and how, how can you manage these behaviours that are automatic? The first and easiest place to understand what you're actually thinking because there's a connection between your thoughts and an emotion. Mm -hmm. So there's, you have a thought, there's a little place in, your, in the bottom of your brain that puts a peptide into your body, which is just a protein, and it's the emotion. So that emotion mm -hmm. is created by a thought. So if you can actually get the emotion, you then know that you've had a program that's just ran. So the easiest way to find a program, a subconscious program, is by the way you're feeling in that moment. And if it's inappropriate, which most of them are, and if it's negative, you know you have a negative program running in your subconscious mind. But what if, so I'm the wife who's asked him to take the rubbish out. What if I don't think what I've asked is a bad thing and I do think his reaction is a bad thing but he doesn't see it that way? Well, he's not going to see it because he's subconscious, like driving yeah. the car. So this is, you have to become aware. So you have to become mindful of what's going on inside you. Um, and in a relationship, if one person knows this and the other person knows this, this can be a little bit difficult. Mm -hmm. So we call those reactions, they, they come from the ego or the negative side of your personality. Okay. So it can cause a little bit of friction if one person actually understands this and then if the throwaway line is, Gee, you're in your ego right now, can you calm down? Mm -hmm. The other person doesn't know. They're just in a subconscious program. They're just in a subconscious program or a subconscious reaction. Mm. So if you, but that is the fastest way to find if you're in a program. The secret from there is to actually change the program 
in your subconscious mind. Because what we're finding now, a lot of, lot of people are coming to us from psychology, the, the traditional psychology, mm -hmm. and psychology works in the 5% of the mind. And yep. it doesn't really make sense when the majority of your mind is subconscious or 95% is programming. You want to be working in the majority of your mind to get the fastest results. Mm. So we have people come, come in who have been years and years in the system come in and getting very, very quick results because we change, help them understand and educate them on changing the subconscious mind. It's, it's a, we need a couple of hours to talk about that. Okay, so to help people who are watching, how does it kind of work? You, so I come to you, I, I've got a problem um, in this area of my life. I'm not sure what's going wrong, but I'm, I know something's not right. And so is it just a process of you helping me identify them and changing the, mi the mindsets? What, how does it work? Esse essentially, yes. Uh -huh. So we, can, we have a way to access the subconscious mind. So right. when, when you have a particular type of training and skill, we can then go into someone's mind. And this is where it may seem a little bit woo-woo to people I was just about there. to say, hello, you're going to go into someone's mind. <laughs> <laughs> no script. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Mel, this is where this is where si this is where actually science comes into this and it backs it up big time because we we learn um, physics at school, physics mm -hmm. and biology, which is the material world, Bio biological body. Mm -hmm. You're actually not biological; you're energetic. So these are molecules pushing against each other. That's not fingers touching each other; they're molecules pushing away. We get a big enough microscope, look at anything under a microscope, and it's air. So we're actually energetic. So how do we know this? Put a body in some heat, and you get left with the matter it's made out of. The easiest way to explain that, what, what, are we turn, what comes out when we get cremated? A little bit of earth. All right. A little bit of matter. That's all we're made out of. The rest of it's energy. The rest of it's air. Right. So let's take, like, we're now working with energy psychology. Not psychology, not biological psychology, energy psychology. Cool. Well, it sounds like it's really interesting and in depth. Um, I look forward to chatting to you again soon. But um, thank you for your time. It's been really insightful. I'm sure some people have a lot more questions and they know how to get hold of you. So thank you. We'll see you next time on the show where we might just have Tony back again, giving us some more insights about this woo-woo stuff. But, you know, he's talked about science. I don't know. We'll see what we can discuss next time. Thanks for joining us.